after describing the important structure and the basic idea of deep learning, we now can introduce uh, several uh, state-of-the-art research status and the next wave of deep learning. And this is the outline. We will first uh, describe uh, some state-of-the-art framework uh, based on super supervised learning. And we will also talk about re reinforcement learning and also on supervised learning. And basically, basically, all these research fields are still ongoing. And uh, uh, there are many, many exciting uh, research advance, research status uh, every day. Uh, the first thread of supervised learning is the ultra deep network. Uh, starting from year 2012, the LSNet was proposed uh, to do uh, image object recognition. And at that time, uh, we have a big advance on uh, image recognition. And uh, the LSNet consists of eight layers. Okay. And in year 2014, <coughs> there is another network called VGG. Okay. VGG consists of 19 layers and the at the image net uh, image recognition the, the error rate reduced from 16 percent to 7.3 percent and at the same layer at later at the same layer in year 2014 google net consists of 22 layers and uh, the recognition error reduced is reduced to 6.7 percent and from that, researchers keep increasing uh, the numbers of layers and the design various structure to improve uh, the performance. And in year 2015, residue net proposed by Microsoft actually achieved only 3.57 error rate. And this residue net consists of 152 layers. So this is a very, very, very deep network. So we call it ultra deep network. And you may imagine that in such uh, ultra deep network, will that, uh, will that be overfitting? Is, it, uh, is there overfitting problem? Okay. Uh, before worry about overfitting, we should worry about how to train such network. Of course, we need to prepare many many data okay and uh, even if we have many data we still need to uh, design spatial structure so that we can uh, train such deep network and actually in the residue net uh, the, the the link between different layers is designed like this of course from one layer to another layer layer are many many edge and uh, also, not only for the, uh, in addition to this, the input of the first hidden layer will also input to the third hidden layer, okay? And the output of the second layer will also input to uh, the fifth uh, hidden layer. So it, it, it has a very special structure. It has a very special structure. And such uh, spatial structure is actually make the ultra deep map the residue net as an ensemble of many network of different lengths. So actually, uh, although uh, the residue net consists of more than 150 layers, actually it is a collection of networks consisting of different depths. Okay, for example, if we go through from layer by layer so we have from this layer to this layer to this layer and to this layer and so on then we say that this is a six layer network however if we go through uh, the red paths okay so we have we go through the first layer second layer uh, the fifth layer and then the sixth layer actually when we go through the red paths it is a four layer network and if we go through the blue path, it is actually 
a two-layer network. And uh, in the residue net, uh, they automatically determine whether uh, they automatically de determine the path of uh, input data should traverse. Okay, so we can view that the residue net is actually a collection or an ensemble of many network, and that that would be uh, that would be why uh, the residue net can achieve such low recognition error. And there are also many other variants. For example, there is also a, a network called fractal net. Okay, in the fractal net, the input Z may be input to some layer or input to uh, several, uh, se uh, may maybe go through for one layer, maybe go through for this layer and this layer, or maybe go through to this layer, this layer, this layer, this layer. So the same input information can be input to uh, different levels of layers okay and this is just one block and we can accumulate many many block okay and this is the structure of fractal net so uh, by seeing all this network structure we can feel that um, depending on the application and uh, depending on your novelty your imagination you can design many many different kinds of network structure to handle the problem you face. So in addition to residue network, there is also another advanced network. Uh, so from the residue network, we see that it is actually an ensemble of network that may consist of uh, two layer, four layer, six layer, and so on. Uh, and uh, starting from, we learn the deep, le deep learning. We have a question is that can we uh, automatically learn the structure of a network? Can we do that? Okay, so just recall, starting from fully connected network, convolutional neural network, uh, RNN recurrent neural network. Okay, uh, at the beginning of this work, we first need to design a network structure. We need to de determine the numbers of layers, the numbers of nodes in such network, right? And uh, you may imagine that uh, is it possible to uh, automatically learn the structure of network? The answer is yes. Okay, since the highway network was proposed, we know that uh, this uh, this problem has a solution. The idea of highway network is that given the input, we may directly input this information to a hidden layer or we can copy it to the next layer. However, we have a gate to control whether uh, the input can be copied, directly copied to the next layer or not. So depending on the input information, we will have a gate controller information to control whether the gate can be opened or not. Okay, so this is uh, the basic structure. And if we ac accumulate uh, such basic structure uh, into a deep network, then we may be able to automatically learn the structure. For example, uh, we can accumulate many, many such layers. And uh, based on the learning, based on learning strategy, uh, we, we finally may learn that uh, based on such input, this gate can be connected. This gate can be broken. Okay, so it change to this gate and then change to this gate. So uh, this is a network. Basically, we input it like here. We, 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 the input information is traversed like here, and then here, and then here. OK, so basically, it, it, it is a one layer structure. However, for other input, we may connect this, connect this, and connect this. Then we go through from this path here, then go through to here, and so on. So we have a two-layer network. Okay, and remember that whether the gate is open or not is auto automatically learned based on the training data. So by this way, this is a highway network. By this way, we can automatically 
learn the network structure. We can automatically learn the numbers of layers that can be used uh, for some uh, target problem. So highway network automatically determine the layers needed. Okay, so this is the first part. We introduced the ultra deep network. The next idea we want to introduce is called the attention-based model. So imagine that uh, when somebody, some user asks a question, what is deep learning? Then according to uh, your memory, according to your organization, you may try to uh, find the best answer to answer this question. So uh, there may be many knowledge in your brain. Okay? Uh, you, in your brain, you may have a memory store what you have learned in these lectures. You may have a, a, a storage to uh, store what you eat for lunch today and uh, where you go uh, in this summer vacation. And when you try to uh, answer this question, you will find the most appropriate memory to answer this question after organization. Okay, and this is the so-called attention-based model. We try, we try to mimic, we try to find the best part to answer the question. So given an input, we may use a deep neural network or recurrent neural network um, to process the information. And then from the memory, we will try to find the most appropriate part we can read. Uh, we, can we can control a reading head controller to read the most appropriate memory to answer this question and output. Okay, so this is the very virtual idea of the uh, attention-based model. And uh, not only for reading, we may also try to write. So given some input, we may learn something from this input. So we can also write uh, the uh, information into the memory. Okay, so this is the idea that is similar to Turing machine. So in, uh, in uh, this year, uh, there is a paper proposed by a famous research group that is called new, Neutral Turing Machine. Uh, they try to use uh, deep learning to mimic the process of, of uh, Turing Machine. And uh, such atten attention-based model can be adopted to do many applications. For example, reading comprehension. Okay, so given a query, we would like to answer this query. Okay, so through the deep learning, uh, deep neural network, we can control the reading head controller to read uh, the information, read the memory, appropriate memory. Okay, and of course, this memory has been stored and learned based on uh, uh, semantic analysis, based on reading many, many documents we have already known. So this is just like our human brain. We have already read many, many documents, and then we can learn the knowledge, okay? We can learn knowledge and we can store each sentence as a vector, for example. And by given this query, we will find the most appropriate sentence to answer this query. Okay, so uh, this is an application uh, for reading comprehension. So a paper published in year 2015 uh, in NIPS, uh, this is an example. Um, we may ask, uh, uh, we, we may learn from uh, the training document. For example, we, we have already known that uh, Brian is a frog, Lily is gray, Brian is yellow, Julius is green, gray is frog, okay? And when there is a query, what color is gray? Okay, so first, uh, by uh, given this query, the neural network will first determine what is gray. Okay, so we know that gray is a frog. Okay, and then uh, based on the memory uh, the network has stored, we also know that Brian is a frog. Okay, and then we know that Brian is yellow. So we infer that Greg, Greg is also in yellow. Okay, so by appropriately uh, select the, the most related memory, we can 
uh, successively uh, answer the question. And if you are interested in uh, this related work, please refer to the, the paper. The attention-based model can also be used uh, can also be used in um, visual question answering. Okay, so given an image, we may answer a question: What is the most that made of? Okay, what is the most that made of? So, given this query and this image, we try to answer the 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 uh, we try to answer this question. Okay, so the answer is banana. Okay, so how can we do that? Uh, given this query, we also um, through the deep neural network we uh, activate a control signal, and based on this control signal, we may be able to access the most appropriate part. For example, mustang, it will automatically detect mustang, and then it will recognize this mustang region, and finally, um, finally, uh, it will answer. Uh, the the most that is made of banana, okay. So uh, we can see that uh, not by reading documents in this framework, they get knowledge from image, they get memory from image, and by describing image, we can use convolutional neural network, okay. So we can integrate convolutional neural network, RNN, or maybe other deep neural network so that we can do uh, the visual question answering here's another work published in year 2015 okay uh, so we also give a text-based question is there a red square on the bottom of the cat okay and we also given give this image okay so first uh, the network may control to find where is the cat okay so we found here is a cat and then we try to find the button of the cat and then we check whether there is a red square okay so finally the, the answer is yes so again the image information uh, provides uh, the knowledge or the memory for the deep network so this is how attention based model can be used to do visual question answering and in the following, we will talk about briefly talk about a very hot topic called reinforcement learning. This topic is quite uh, popular, quite hot because of the development the, because of the development of AlphaGo system. The systems and the, the network structure we mentioned above are all supervised learning. Okay, the so-called supervised learning is that we try to learn from a teacher. That is, we prepare a set of training data, and then we also prepare the result, the corresponding result or the corresponding ground truth to to uh, to train uh, the design network. For example, uh, the training data may include, for, for example, the user say hello, and then uh, the standard answer would be hi. Okay, and if the user say bye bye. And then the standard answer of the uh, developed system may be goodbye. And the hi and the goodbye are the answer we prepare to train uh, the network. And this is the so-called supervised learning. And for reinforcement learning, uh, we actually we didn't uh, prepare the, the, the answer, okay, the standard answer uh, corresponding to training data. We just um, for example, for a question and answer system, we just collect a sequence of uh, conversation, and uh, finally uh, the result of such co uh, conversation. For example, after several uh, conversation, and finally the the customer uh, is angry and uh, um, hand off the phone. So the result, the final result is bad. Okay, and we try to collect a, a lot of uh, conversation uh, to learn from the uh, critics okay so uh, we automatically learn uh, the sequence okay from a sequence of uh, conversation and uh, try to learn uh, whether such uh, sequence uh, is 
will cause a bad result or a good result. Okay, so we don't really uh, uh, provide the ground truth for each sentence or for each conversation. Okay, we just let the system automatically learn the result. And this is actually the scenario of AlphaGo. Okay, uh, for AlphaGo, you may also uh, read a few news that uh, although it, at the beginning uh, we input many um, uh, situation to the AlphaGo, but the AlphaGo uh, will, according to such such observation, the AlphaGo will take some action. Okay, and then after such action. Uh, we may change the environment, we may change the situation, and then the reward may also change. Okay, and we iteratively uh, have new observation, and then we take a few action, and then uh, we finally try to maximize the reward. Okay, and the engine learns to take action to maximize the expected re reward, and uh, not uh, every action has a standard uh, ground truth, okay? But we try to maximize the overall uh, sequence of action, okay? So uh, to do comparison, if we only develop the system based on supervised learning, that means uh, based on such input, we may output the next move that maybe you should occupy the position at 5.5. Five. And uh, given such input, then we should take the action at 3.3 three and so on. So this is the conventional supervised learning. And for reinforcement learning, we just input a sequence of move to the, 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 the uh, AlphaGo system. And then we only know after many, many moves, the result is somebody wins. Okay. So the AlphaGo system automatically learn a sequence of move and uh, they try to learn from uh, this sequence and they try to predict the result. Okay, that is win or not. So actually AlphaGo is a hybrid system. It is based on supervised learning as well as reinforcement learning. For supervised learning, we input many uh, uh, kinetical cases, kinetical situation from the Go textbook, okay, to make the AlphaGo learn the baseline system. And then it, uh, the, the, the Google team, okay, the Google team used reinforcement learning to further improve the performance of AlphaGo. Okay. So this is the bas very basic idea of reinforcement learning. And the difficulty of reinforcement learning is that it may be better to sacrifice immediate uh, reward to gain more long-term reward. Okay, so sometimes when you take some action, it looks uh, not so smart, but for overall, uh, the the uh, for overall the final result will be maximized. So you may also um, read some new read some uh, report that. Uh, when the AlphaGo uh, compete with the um, human player, the human player feel that sometimes the AlphaGo uh, cannot uh, take a very smart action. But actually, finally, uh, the AlphaGo system uh, beats the human player. Okay, so for humans' uh, viewpoint, some action taken by the AlphaGo may not be so smart. However, this is the result uh, the, uh, calculated based on the Alpha, uh, by the AlphaGo system because uh, it tries to maximize the overall reward rather than uh, a very uh, rather than making each action uh, uh, very smart. Okay, so agents actions affect the subsequent data it receives. So sometimes according to different uh, input uh, receive data, then the action, of course, the action may be changed. So for the concept, of course, how can we 
uh, maximize the overall reward, we use the deep neural network. Okay, we use the deep neural network. So the observation is the function input, and uh, uh, this deep neural network would output the action. Okay, and then according to different action, we may uh, change the environment, and then according to the environment, we would like to uh, pick the best function to it. We would like to um, calculate the reward and then try to adjust uh, the uh, parameter of this deep neural network. And uh, the idea of reinforcement learning uh, just start in recent years, and uh, there have been uh, some application. The most famous one is AlphaGo, and actually there are also uh, some others like a flying helicopter driving, automatic driving, or um, Google cuts its giant electricity bill with the DeepMind Power API, uh, Power AI. And if you, if you are interested in learning the deep reinforcement learning, uh, you can read the lecture provided by uh, David Silver, or uh, there are some online courses. At the, the final part of this lecture video, we will talk about our supervised learning. Okay, and uh, we will briefly uh, go through uh, three uh, important applications. The first one is image. Uh, there have been some works working on realizing what the world looks like. So, the one of the biggest uh, questions uh, the computer vision society want to ask is does machine know what the world look like okay so uh, given a large volume of images to an AI system or to an agent uh, can this agent draw something similar to uh, to real images okay actually there have been some work uh, that can do this, okay? So give a large volume of image to the system, and this system try to um, automatically draw something such that the result of the drawing looks quite uh, reasonable, looks reasonable or looks um, interesting uh, to humans. So the first project is uh, called uh, Deep Dream. So given a photo, machine adds what it sees. Okay, so assume we have already uh, trained a machine uh, based on la a large volume of uh, uh, images. And then given this photo, uh, how can uh, this machine realize this photo? The, we, we have a URL here and you can try this, okay. Um, you can input your photo and if we input this photo how the machine uh, understand what it is actually it looks like this okay it seems that uh, th there is uh, some bug here and there is a bear uh, and uh, there is uh, another animal and there are many flowers uh, there are birds and so on okay so this is what the machine understand this video, uh, this image and this project is called Deep Dream. And you can easily find related uh, literature on the internet. Another project is called Deep Style. So given a photo, make its style like a famous painting. For example, given this photo, and we would like to uh, change the style of this photo to this uh, painting. Okay, And you can easily uh, find the URL that you can do such uh, style transfer. And if we give uh, this photo and I give this painting, then we can transform uh, the photo into such style. Okay. And actually, we know that uh, there has been some app uh, working, uh, working on mobile phone. You can easily download it. So how can uh, this system do that okay the basic idea is uh, given this photo we use a 
CNN convolutional neural network to extract the important feature or extract the, uh, the visual characteristic. Okay. And for this painting, we also use CNN to extract the style. Okay. And then uh, we try to generate an image where when the image input to CNN, the content will be similar to the original photo, but the style will be similar to this painting. Okay. So we can initialize a plain image and then we try to adjust the the pixel value and the color of this image such that the visual content is similar to the original video and the style is similar to this painting. There, there is another exciting project uh, called uh, Generating Images by RNN. Okay. So imagine that uh, we theoretically we can uh, given the first the color of the first pixel and then we can generate the color of the second pixel and then uh, we store the information uh, in this uh, network and then use this memory information uh, given the second pixel uh, given the color of the second pixel we generate the color of the third pixel and so on so we can generate pixel by pixel and finally generate uh, the whole image and this project looks quite crazy but actually it it is really can be done um, there is a work called pixel recurrent neural network the idea is just like uh, we mentioned above and assume that uh, we are given half of the image and then according to such information uh, we try to generate the color of the uh, button half pixels okay so uh, actually uh, finally this uh, system can generate uh, image like this or maybe like this or maybe like this okay. and uh, if we just roughly uh, see this image uh, we may not be easy to dis distinguish uh, which one is generated uh, by computer and which one is a real um, is a real image is a real animal so um, such idea is quite crazy, but actually um, the deep neural network uh, actually can really do so. And uh, for generating image, there are also many other variants, variation. Okay, the idea is training a decoder to generate images. Okay, and uh, uh, there is a method called variation auto encoder. Okay. And if you are interested in this method, please check. And then there is also another work called Generative Adversal Network, GAN. Okay. And this network is also very uh, famous in generating images. So uh, by using the uh, OpenAI, okay, by using uh, the, the API provided by this website, uh, we can automatically generate uh, the images. Okay, so you can check, you can compare uh, these two set of images, and to see where, uh, which one is human uh, is is machine generated. Okay, and basically, uh, most people still can uh, distinguish that the right part, the right part, are machine generated because some object or some animal uh, is a little bit weird, okay? So right now, uh, the automatically generating image still cannot pass the Turing test. And actually, the same idea can be also used to, uh, not to generate image, but maybe used to generate comics, okay? And if you are interested in, please check this URL. Uh, another unsupervised learning uh, research field is the text, okay, text understanding. So we try to understand the meaning of words. Uh, actually, this is a, a research field called machine reading, okay. So we try to make the machine learn the meaning of words 
from reading a lot of documents without supervision. So we just input a large volume of document to a machine and uh, we try to uh, make this machine realize the meaning of words. Okay. Um, for example, we try to automatically learn um, whether two words are semantically similar. For example, after learning, we may be able to know that the word tree and the flower are similar. The word run and jump are similar. Okay, comparing with flower, run is more similar to jump. Okay, and uh, dog, rabbit, and cat, they are all animal and uh, they should be clustered uh, together. Okay, so uh, we try to uh, make machine automatically learn such uh, relationship uh, based on a large volume of documents. Okay, and uh, such generating word vector or embedding is unsupervised. So we try to transform each word into a vector or we try to do some uh, embedding such that a uh, semantically similar word uh, can be embedded into similar uh, uh, positions, okay? So we, will, we have to prepare a lot of training data. And how can machine do that? Actually, a word can be understood by its context. For example, um, uh, we may from the news from many document, from news document, we may uh, we may see that um, uh, this person uh, actually Ma Ma Yinjo Wu Li Xuan Shi Jiu Zhi. That means the President Ma Yinjo uh, step up, okay, uh, at uh, May uh, May twenty, okay, and this is another president, President Tsai Ing Wen, okay, also stay up at uh, May uh, 20s, okay? And because these two words has very similar context, so we can expect that uh, these two words should be similar, okay? And uh, by uh, some uh, research study, uh, right now, the machine really can uh, learn the relationship uh, between uh, words, okay. For example, uh, we can uh, find the relationship between Spain and Madrid, Italy and Rome, Germany and Berlin, and we can see that the left side are all country name, and the right side are all capital, uh, are all the capital city of these countries, okay. So we can automatically learn the relationship between uh, uh, words, okay. We may also uh, automatically learn uh, the different tense of a word like take, took, taken. Okay, we can automatically automatically learn the relationship. And if we can transform a word into a vector, we can also do some algebraic calculation between words. For example, uh, the word hotter minus hot may be approximate similar to bigger minus big okay so we can see that if we can um, uh, represent a word into a vector we actually can do calculation between words okay we can do algebraic calculation and for example uh, the R rome minus italy is approximately similar to berlin minus germany because they are all capital city minus the country name. King minus queen may be equal to uncle minus aunt. Okay, so we can do such interesting algebraic calculation even if they, the, the entity we process are words. Okay. We, we can also solve um, uh, analog, uh, analogy 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 okay so uh rome versus italy should be equal to berlin versus germany okay so we can automatically uh, uh output the word germany okay 
and so on.